Okay, video number 16 in the Schneider Modicon TM3 expansion modules. We're gonna look at a very special TM3 card. It's one that does analog and temperature, and it has both inputs and it has outputs. It's probably, from the sake of a troubleshooting, one of the handiest modules that you can keep around in your plants, because if you lose analog uh, inputs, if you lose analog outputs or temperature outputs, you can throw one of these in there and you can hopefully limp through, you know, just by moving that one analog over rather than having to go and redo the entire plant. So one of my favorite ones, specifically the one that we are looking at is going to be this, the TM3 TM3. Uh, they just named it after itself. It was so good, I guess. And it is going to go and have three connections that we are going to go and have available. We're going to have inputs, uh, one input and that, sorry, one output and a couple of different inputs. There is also a larger one that is going to be the AM6. Where it's going to go and have six IO points that is going to be off of it. We'll get into the wiring in a second. Let's first start by defining which PLCs we can use it with. The 221, 241, 251, or 262 class of Modicon is going to be usable with it. If we take a look at our inputs that we're able to go and take in, our inputs are gonna be broken down into two main classes. We have either got regular voltage or current. So analog inputs of four to 20, zero to 20, zero to 10 volt, or plus or minus 10 volt that we can take in. We've also got a bunch of specific temperature ones that have been pre-programmed in. So when you're doing your actual setup inside the PLC on the programming, you can select whether you're using one of these uh, thermocouples that we are going to go and have, or whether you're going to be using one of these three wire RTDs that we're going to have, the NIPTs that we are going to have. So all of that has been set up for your inputs. Outputs as well, we've got a single analog output that is capable of doing current as 4 to 20, 0 to 20, or voltage 0 to 10 volt or plus or minus 10 volts. Because we've got so many options off of this, we've also got a lot more complementary data that we need to go and take a look through. Taking a look at my input impedance, or sorry, input uh, resolution, let's start with that one over there. If we see that our input resolution is going to be 16 bits, we can compare that with our output, which is going to be 12 bits. This is standard that inputs are usually going to be able to be one uh, you know, block that is going to be larger, or half of a byte that we see larger. So 16 bits that we can take for our inputs off of there, that's 15 bits plus a sign. My output is going to be 12 bits. It should also be listed as this being 11 bits plus a sign, so you can go plus minus with it as well. Looking at the LSB values over here, we are gonna break some of this apart because they did not do a great job of uh, splitting these apart. These ones over here are going to be your outputs that we are going to go and see. These ones over here are going to go and be your inputs that we are going to go and see. So uh, we do see zero to 10 volts and you know four to 20 milliamps repeat it twice. What we do note about it is that on my input, I can see smaller movement. I can, oops, sorry. I'll, with a highlighter so we can read that 0 to 15 millivolts on my 0 to 10 volt is the smallest increments that I can measure inputs at taking a look at my current I can measure changes in current of 0.3 micro amps so we're actually down into the nano amps at that point 300 nano amps change that I can measure on there or 244 uh, nano amps on the 4 to 20 milliamps. Temperature, we're down to 0.1 of a degree accuracy that we can read off of it. When it comes to my outputs, my outputs are much coarser in what I can go in effect. You'll note that the smallest output change that I can make is 2.44 millivolts on the uh, 0 to 10 volt, and that, that doubles to 4.88 when I'm on the 10 through 10. Same with my current over here, the smallest change that I can make is 4.88 microamps or 3.91 microamps if we're gonna be on the four to 20 milliamps. So because we have got that smaller resolution, we do see that we are going to go and have coarser steps that we are going to be achieving off of it. Stabilization time over here is dealing with the amount of time it takes for this thing to go and put its proper output out that we are going to go and have. Conversion time and sampling duration over here are going to be dealing with inputs for sampling duration. That's how long it's going to take it to go and read that in. Conversion time is going to be the amount of time it takes to affect an output. And what you're seeing is that it is going to be sampling duration plus stabilization duration plus total number of you know controller times that we are going to have. So the bigger your program is, the longer it's going to take to affect those changes off of it. 
All right, looking at our wiring, this is all wiring for this one here, the TM3, TM3. What it shows us is that we need to go and put power. So we'll pick any one of these. We'll deal with this one here, three in the middle. We got to apply a positive and a negative from an external supply to this card itself, as well as a ground. That's going to go and power up and stabilize this card. Then what we can do is we can come out of that card and we see that these three, all three of these are the exact same card uh, that we are able to take on our cues, cues standing for output, a positive and a negative out that we can use as zero to 10 plus or minus 10, uh, zero to 20 or four to 20. You would choose that inside of your programming, what you are planning to utilize this as. You're gonna have to go through your configuration, set it up as being a current output or a voltage output. What we then see as well is that we have got these blocks of input. So we're just going to draw a line down the middle of these blocks of inputs over here. Uh, these blocks of inputs can be used as either a 0 to 10 volt input or 4 to 20, any one of our analogs. So I could take in a positive, negative into these over here, and I would be able to read that uh, current or voltage. Alternatively, I can go and take in a two wire temperature sensing, so thermocouple that we could go and run in the positive and the negative into here. And at that point, we would use a, or we would have a not connected terminal. We don't need to use that terminal. Same as what we see over here, we don't need to use that terminal. If, however, I go to a three wire device, my three wire device is always going to go and have two leads that are going to be the same color, B and, you know, B sample, and then one that's going to be a different color. And what we do then is we can use the B hyphen. You'll note that that was all over here, ABB, and here it is ABB. They've just moved it over to the side to make it clear when we're taking a look at that. So you're going to find the two that are going to be the same color whatever color that's going to be. It could be two reds, it could be two blacks, it could be two whites. You pick two that are the same color, they go to B and B sample. And then the A is going to come into the plus that we are going to go and see off of here. We'll do that on our installation sheet. Uh, before we get into the installation sheet, let's just talk about the fusing that we should be putting in. The fusing should be done through a proper fuse holder. Schneider does recommend the use of T fuses, but type T fuse holders and fuses can be hard to come by. So use whatever's gonna be available in your region, but make sure there is fusing on those outputs. If you're using CC, use it with a HCLR style, which is gonna be fast acting. Alternatively, you can get the fast acting ceramic or glass ones like that. DIN rail mounted so that it's nearby. And as always, I suggest having a, um, over, or sorry, a blown fuse indicator on there, that little indicator light. Okay, here is our wiring. Before we jump into the wiring, let's just go and take a look at what has already been pre-done for us. We see that we are providing AC in through a DIN rail breaker into a DC power supply. The DC power supply changes that over to 24 volts and we feed that 24 volts out. We can go through this fuse holder into my main PLC. So that's gonna be the main brain for my system over here. We also see that we have got 24 volts that is being brought over to this set of blocks over here that we are going to use to power up that card itself. We'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see the card itself as it looks. We've got our main PLC over here on this side. We have got the TM3, TM3 card we've connected. We see the power supply inputs up top here. That's going to power this card up so it can operate. We see the Q plus and Q minus. That's going to be my output off of these ones here. And then over here, we see the uh, inputs, you know, plus and minus, or alternatively, I can take a look at my ABB that I'm going to go and have for my resistive temperature devices. And they show that off of both of these on these ones here. So we'll do all of these connections. First thing that we are going to deal with is we are going to deal with an analog output from the action. No, before we do that, we should power this thing up. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna power up. We're gonna to have to apply 24 volts in like that. Actually, I'm gonna go and make that a little closer over here because we're gonna have a lot of wires coming in. 24 volts coming in, we're gonna go and have our negative that is also going to go and come in like that. And then we're going to go and have our ground. So we're gonna take that from a grounding DIN rail connection, connect it in like that. This now provides power to this card itself. We'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see it over there positive, negative going in properly like that. Okay, back out now, we're gonna go and take a look at our first connection, which is gonna be my analog output to field devices. We see that we've got shielded cables over here. Anytime we've got shielded cables coming in, we're going to go and ground the shield on the supply end and isolate it on the field end. We do have cables that have a ground 
conductor inside of them, bond conductor if you prefer that term, uh, that is going to go and run through as well. So we're going to take care of all of our grounding and bonding first now. So here's my, well, we'll start with a shield over here. We're going to take both shields in and in, and then we're going to take both grounds in and in as well. So all of the grounding and bonding has now been accomplished for those cables there. For my analog that is going to a field device, so my output, we need to take my positive to my positive on here. We need to take my negative to my negative on here. And so we're taking that to the Q terminals of this device. There's my Q terminals, and there's my analog field device that I'm feeding out to. Straightforward enough, our inputs are going to be done in a very similar manner. I'm going to erase these outputs now that we've taken a look at them, just so that we have fewer wires that are going to be available on here right now. If I'm taking an input in, all I need to do is find my positive from my input, and I take that into an IO positive, and I take my negative into an IO negative like that as well. And we'll just zoom in on that one so we can take a look. There's my analog that I'm feeding in from a device, 0 to 10 volt feeding it in here, or 4 to 20 milliamp, plus to plus, negative to negative off of that. Straightforward as well. The last one that we're going to take a look at would be using these things as a temperature sensing. So we've got a thermocouple and we've got an RTD. If I've got a thermocouple, it's going to be two wire and I just need to take it to the plus minus. So we'll do that over here. Take this one up and into my plus. We'll take this negative from my thermocouple up and into my negative like that. That's my thermocouple wiring. If it was a shielded uh, cable coming in from there, which it should be, you would also be tying that down here. I'm just showing the actual, you know, threaded in thermocouples themselves. This one over here, my resistive temperature device or my RTD does have three wires. I need to identify which two wires have the same coloration. It could be two blacks and a white, could be two whites and a black, could be two reds and a black, two blacks and a red. Whatever it is, you find the two that are going to be the same and you're going to attach them to same terminals. I got B and B sample and then the oddball is going to go to the A off of here. So we'll just zoom a little bit back out over here so we can see everything. We will connect these in. I'm going to go and use this light blue here for my oddball. We'll start with the oddball and we take it into a connection that is going to be different, the A. And then these other two, it does not matter which one goes where, they both need to go into one of those B type of connections. So bring them in like that over there. We'll just zoom in so we can see our thermocouple and our resistive temperature device wiring. There's the thermocouple plus minus. It goes onto the two conductor, the plus and minus like that. There's my RTD. The two that are the same go onto B and B sample. The one that is different goes onto my A for it. And that's your wiring for a TM3, TM3. Like I said, a very handy little card to keep around because you can do inputs, outputs. So if you end up with a blown card on your PLC, you can grab one of these, put it in temporarily, and so you can order the proper card that you want to continue on full time with.